in the last lecture we have seen different types of variables for instance what is a numerical variable where you have discrete and continuous type and the categorical variables where you have nominal and ordinal so after studying different types of variables it is also important to identify the relationship between different variables suppose you want to examine the relationship between two or more variables or you want to see how changes in one variable can bring a change in the other variable or this change may be associated to each other in such a case it is important to understand about two key terms which are independent variables and dependent variable independent variable are also referred to as explanatory variables and are those variables which are under the control of the researcher so researcher can basically make changes in this variable in order to see what is its impact on the other variable on the other hand you have dependent variable which is referred to also referred to as a response variable and these are basically the responses or the outcomes which we measure after making changes in the independent variable and basically if we want to assess that what is the impact of the changes in the independent variable we look at the dependent variable so an example for this can be suppose you want to investigate the effect of different types of fertilizers on plant growth now here if you see types of fertilizers they can be of various types right so and it is also under your control you can choose different types of fertilizers and based upon it you can go ahead so types of fertilizers over here is your independent variable because that is under your control whereas the plant growth is your dependent variable because here you measure how tall the plant has grown based on the different types of fertilizers you have added so here you can see that types of fertilizers is your independent variable and your plant growth is basically your dependent variable or your response variable note that the nature of these variables here you can see that independent variable can be of discrete continuous nominal or ordinal type similarly your dependent variable can also be of these types for instance if you consider this example only over here here you have different types of fertilizers so different types of fertilizers are what these are basically different categories over here you can categorize the types of fertilizers into different labels but here note that you cannot order them right so this is basically your nominal variable okay so this is of nominal type so independent variable in this case is of nominal type whereas if we look at the plant growth so plant growth is basically your continuous variable because here you are going to measure the height of the plant so height as we have already seen in the last lecture that height is your continuous variable in a similar way you can have different other scenarios where independent variable can be of any of these types or maybe a combination of these whereas on the other hand your dependent variable can also be of the same nature for instance a company can send different advertising emails to its customers and the company is now interested to see what is the impact of the number of advertising emails a person receives so on the number of products they are going to purchase in that case the study might help the company in order to see what is the optimal number of emails they should send such that the customer does not get offended or it does not irritate or overwhelm the person okay so it such a study might be helpful to the company in this case if you see the number of advertising emails so this is your independent variable whereas the number of products it will be your dependent variable and in both the cases if you look at the type of variable the nature of these variables both are of discrete nature because here we are focusing on the discrete numbers 
Another study of this type can be where you are interested to analyze the effect of the time that you spent exercising on the weight loss. In this case again time spent is your independent variable and weight loss is your dependent variable and if you see at the nature of look at the nature of these variables then time is as we all know time is your continuous variable and again weight is also your continuous variables. Next, a school administration might be interested to see the effect of different teaching methods on students test scores. Different teaching methods in that case can be the traditional method or maybe through online tutorials or the hands-on workshops. So there are different categories over here. But note that they are not in order. There is no inherent ordering present in these methods. You cannot say that one method is superior to the other method. There exist some categories, but there is no inherent ordering in this. So different teaching methods is basically your nominal variable, whereas the marks of the students is your discrete variable. Another situation of this can be where a company wants to assess the impact of customer satisfaction ratings on customer loyalty. So customer satisfaction ratings like you must have experienced when you visit any mall or any store so they usually ask for your feedback and there you can give them ratings basically like satisfied uh, it varies from unsatisfied to satisfied and uh, do these ratings have any impact on customer loyalty. So customer loyalty again over here basically is the customer's commitment to visit that store or the frequency of visiting that store you can say or you can think of that how many referrals do they give to their friends so in such a way the company might be interested they, they are interested to make loyal customers so that again loyalty can also be categorized as it can be of low loyalty can be low moderate or high so in both the cases customer satisfaction ratings as well as customer loyalty both have categories but the change is the order because here you can see that both of them have an inherent ordering present in them because when you mark dissatisfied then it is evident naturally evident to each one of us that one who is marking satisfactory then that is higher satisfaction is more in that case similarly loyalty loyalty if the loyalty is high we know that customer loyalty if it is somebody has marked as moderate then we know that that person's loyalty is higher or we can basically compare their loyalties from customer to customer so such analysis is really helpful for the companies so here in all these cases you have seen that we have different types of independent variables likewise the type or the nature of the dependent variable can also vary now understanding these concepts of independent and dependent variables is essential because it helps us in understanding or developing association between the two variables or establishing cause and effect relationships. So hence it is important for you to understand these concepts thoroughly because it will be helping you in making different analysis later on and it will also help you in drawing valid conclusions like how the variables are interacting with either with each other and how they influence each other so now with this background we are now going to move to different types of studies see any study can be broadly classified as either observational or experimental as the name itself suggests observational studies are those in which we simply observe what is happening. The researcher does not interfere in the process and at the end you can finally establish an association between different variables. For instance, let us consider this example of smoking and lung cancer. Suppose you want to conduct an observational study to establish the relationship between smoking on lung cancer so what you will do here you can consider a group of individuals so you can focus on a particular hospital and then there you can consider a group of uh, patients who have been diagnosed with lung cancer and then another group can be the one in which you have individuals who do not have lung cancer 
also they do not have any family history specifically you have to focus on the individuals living in the similar geographic location so you make two different groups and in each to each group of individual you will then ask questions like whether they have do they smoke or not and if yes then how many cigarettes do they smoke per day and if a person does not smoke then you can also ask whether they are exposed to some passive smoking or not and then you make an analysis based upon this now if suppose you find that smoking is prevalent in the group of individuals who had the lung cancer in that case what you can conclude is that smoking and lung cancer are associated with each other because you have now considered an observational study okay so you are not interfering in this process so you have basically collected a sample and you have just simply asked them about their smoking habits so you have not forced them to do anything so you will just simply observe what has happened and you will note down the readings and based upon this study you can at max conclude that there exists an association between these two variables next study can be where you want to investigate the relation between drinking tea and sleep timing so we all know that we often say that if a person drinks late at night so you drinks tea at late at night then the sleep timing also gets postponed now to investigate this suppose you in your community you can go in your locality and just consider a group of individuals and then ask them questions on their sleep habits such as at what time do they go to bed at what time do they wake up and what is the usual sleep duration and also you will ask them questions related to consuming tea like whether how often do they consume it what is the frequency and which type of tea do they drink like green tea or black tea milk tea so based upon this you can finally do a study and and you can conclude that drinking tea and sleep timing might be associated with each other note that we are using the term association we are not saying that one is causing the other we are just simply saying that the these two variables are associated okay so it will be more clear to you when we discuss in detail that why can we only say an association exists between these variables and not ca and cannot say anything beyond that now see in these two studies in the first study what i said is that i collected a group of individuals divided them and then asked them about their smoking habits so i'm asking what has happened in the past and then collecting their data in the other one what i'm doing is that i am asking them they am just collecting a group of individuals and simultaneously asking them questions about their uh, tea consumption and sleep timing as well so you can see that there is a difference in the way i have conducted these studies so based upon this observational studies can be categorized into three major types the first one is the sample survey which is also referred to as the cross sectional study and it's the most commonly used observational study here what we do is that we give a snapshot of the characteristics of the population so basically we look at what is happening in the current and we give insights we analyze the data and give analysis based upon that only for instance in your drinking tea and sleep timing example what we did was that we collected a group of individuals asked them the questions and then based upon that we analyzed it so we are just focusing on what is happening in the present as opposed to this we have the other one which is retrospective retrospective as the name itself suggests it is referring to something in the past and it is also known as a case control study so you will have two groups one is referred to as the case and the other one is referred to as the control like you did for the lung cancer example so one group had the lung cancer so that is our case and the other one which is free from the lung cancer that is the control group so basically if you relate that example to this we collected a group of individuals case group and the other one is control group and then we asked them about the uh, that has happened in the past so we are gathering data about those events and doing further analysis 
on the other hand we can have prospective study also so it is also referred to as case cohort study so in cohort study what we do is we have taken a group of individuals and then we are going to assign some task and then after a period of time we will see that how these things have influenced them and at the end suppose we keep them for a study in six or one year six months or one year and then at the end we see what is the analysis so let us consider an example over here a company has introduced a workplace wellness program and it wants to now conclude whether there is an impact of this wellness program on employees overall well-being and job satisfaction or not in order to do that they can consider the study in three different ways they can either conduct it as a sample survey they can also conduct it as a retrospective study or a prospective study so if they want to conduct it as a sample survey then what they will do in sample survey they will just select a group of individuals who are currently enrolled in that program and ask them about their current well-being and job satisfaction levels based upon that you will analyze it whereas in the retrospective study one case group will be those who have completed that program and another group of of employees will be the one you will ask them questions on their well-being and job satisfaction levels and then compare them finally in prospective study what you will do is you, you will focus on the ones who have been recently hired and are now going to enroll in this program so you will note down their details and after the at the end of one year you will again meet them you will do the follow ups and then ask them what is their well being and job satisfaction at this point of time after one year so you have asked something you have focused on the individuals and now you are collecting data at the end of one year and further performing the analysis so you see that same example can be constructed in three different ways it all depends upon what is your intention what you want to see what is your goal and likewise you can opt for either of these studies so now let me go back to that same example of smoking and lung cancer in that what i said was that the can be an association between these two variables because i have conducted them as an observational study now just recall that how we conducted that study so we had two group of individuals one who had lung cancer and the other one did not have lung cancer and then we asked them questions related to their smoking habits now the question comes is that can we establish that smoking causes lung cancer the answer to this is no because this is an observational study and you do not have any control over the independent variable why because there are certain other variables which might be present and might have played a role and affected these two independent and dependent variables and hence made them look like there is a relationship between them so most of the time we find that yes lung cancer patients usually smoke but we cannot conclude that smoking is the only factor because there can be some external factors such as the family history or the genetics at times the occupation of an individual might be such that he is exposed to such hazardous substances which had led to the increase in risk of the lung cancer so these variables which we have not considered in our observational study are referred to as confounding variables or you can say these are the external variables which influence both independent and dependent variable seem like there exists a relationship between these variables so it is important to take care of this confounding variable in go to so in order to do that we conduct experiments so what are experimental studies these are the second most commonly used studies so ex in experiments what we do is we randomly assign participants to different groups note that randomization is the key to the success of experiments because when you are assigning participants randomly you are considering that your confounding variables also will be distributed 
across both the groups. So you are not biased towards them that one group is going to have a particular confounding variable and the other one will not. So you have randomly divided them. So you have considered that both of them, both of these groups are going to have some confounding variables. And the second one is that due to this randomization, we are able to establish cause and effect variable. You can say that this independent variable has caused this dependent variable. You cannot, you will not just say that they are associated, rather you will say that they are there exists a cause and effect relationship between or you can say a causal relationship exists between these two variables. To understand this, let us consider our first example. Suppose a pharma company wants to introduce a new drug in the market and he wants they want to see that what is the effect of this drug on the high blood pressure, hypertension patients. So in order to conduct this study, what they can do is they can randomly pick certain individuals who have been diagnosed with the hypertension. Then they will randomly divide them into two groups. So in when they are dividing them into two groups, the first group will be those to which they will be giving this new drug. And in the second group, they will be giving them a placebo, which is which does not have any therapeutic effect. It looks same, but it will not have any therapeutic effect on the individuals. And then at the end, they measure, suppose after one month or two months, at the end, they will see that what is the impact. Is there any reduction in blood pressure? Has, it, has this drug controlled it? At the end, they will analyze it. I could have conducted this as an observational study. And in that case, there will be some confounding variables also. For instance, age could be one of them, right? Gender could have played a role. Their dietary habits could have played a role. But since I have conducted it as an experiment, I have taken care of that because I have randomly divided them into two groups. So one group which is receiving the new drug can also have patients who are of any age group their dietary habits can also be, I mean, if a person eats good, he can, he or she can be in either of the groups. So I'm not biased in sending or assigning them to either group. Another example can be the teaching methods and the student's performance. For example, you can consider this as like a school is interested to see what is the impact of different teaching methods on students' performance. So they can consider a group of students, then they can divide them into, randomly divide them into two groups. So to one group, they will assign uh, the traditional teaching method and to the other group, they will assign, they can assign them to another, suppose online tutorials. Then at the end, they will again conduct an exam and see what is the impact of uh, the teaching method on the students. So initially also they will conduct one exam so that they know what is the baseline performance of the students and at the end of the study also they will conduct it. So since they have randomly assigned students to both these groups, so they have taken care of whether there are any confounding variables or, or not. Okay. So we can consider another example in the same way if we have to explore the relation between exercise intensity and weight loss. So what happens in this case, so I can conduct this as an observational study also and experimental study. So here you can see on the left hand side, we have a group of individuals and there are three different levels of trainings, high intensity, moderate and low. And then we want to see what is the impact of these different intensity trainings on the weight loss. So if I conduct this as an observational study, so what I will do first is I will just focus on these individuals who are suppose focus already doing high intensity training in each of them. We, I will have some certain individuals who are doing moderate intensity. Likewise, we will tell them to continue their exercises. Okay. And then at the end, they will, I will ask them about their weight and then record their changes. So observational study will be very simple in this case. Now at the end of the study, if I find that high intensity training has led to greater weight loss, then I can say that they are related to each other or they are associated, but I cannot say that it has caused weight loss, right? 
Why? Because there are certain confounding factors. Because again, here also you can see the age might have played a role or a person who has already been to gym, he can be doing the HIIT exercises. Uh, we have not basically taken care of the confounding factors in such a study. On the other hand, if I have to conduct this as an experimental study, what I will do is that I will divide the total number of individuals who come to the gym, I will divide them into three different groups and I will tell them that okay you have to this group of individual will be doing HIIT training, the other one will be doing moderate intensity and the last one will be doing the low intensity. I will tell them to continue doing that till a fixed period of time suppose say three months and at that end of the period then I will notice that what is their weight loss. So by conducting such a study we have taken care of other factors, other confounding factors because we have randomly divided them. Any age factor, any age person can be in any of these groups or their dietary habit. Someone who is having a good diet, having a proper healthy diet can be in the low intensity or he can fall in the high intensity exercise group also. So by randomly dividing them, we have controlled those factors and then we have performed this study. So you can see the steps, so you will select the participants with diverse characteristics who wish to lose weight and have different exercise habits. Then you will randomly assign these participants to one of these three intensity exercise groups. You will implement the exercise for a specific duration and at the end you will measure and record the changes in the weight. And at the end you can finally conclude that yes, this training intensity, the exercise training has caused the weight loss okay so based upon these different types of studies and this discussion what you can see is that both these studies have their merits and demerits for instance observational study you, if you see it is having the issue of confounding because and at most you can establish association between the two variables Note that it can only talk about correlation, yes that these two variables are correlated or associated to each other, but it cannot establish that they are, ex there exists a cause and effect relationship. And we also know that correlation does not imply causation because causation we say that we can establish causation when we perform experiments. So experiments are good to do, but the only thing is that at times they are unethical to perform. You cannot ask, if you consider that lung cancer example, in that you cannot ask people divide, randomly divide the group of individuals into two and ask them to go on and do cigarette smoking for like suppose three months and then you record their observations. You cannot do that because it will be unethical. So in such cases, wherever health issues are related, experiments are unethical. So you have to be careful in such things. So this, this basically concludes different types of studies. So in this week, we have we started with different types of variables. Then we learned about the relationship between variables, that is what are independent and dependent variables. And then we have seen different types of studies, which are observational studies and experiment. And within observational study, we have sample survey, retrospective and prospective studies. And as I mentioned, that sample survey is the most commonly used observational study. So in the next lecture, we will focus on sample survey specifically.